Yes? Dr. Walcott speaking. Who? Mr. William Cornish. Sure, send him right up. Thank you. Bill, you old son of a gun. <laughs> Hello, Steve. How's everything? Fine. You're a sight for sore eyes. Come on in. <laughs> How long has it been now? Four years. You haven't changed any. No, I'm getting balder. <laughs> and famous. New York's most prominent nerve specialist. Well, <laughs> Happy to know you. Yeah. <laughs> You've been crashing into print yourself. Yeah. That's not so good for a dick, is it? I don't know. I imagine there are a lot of these investigators who wouldn't object to being spread all over the front page like you've been for the past week. No, I suppose not. But publicity spoils my game. I work best in the dark. And for the love of the game, eh? Have you been at it ever since? Yeah, I can't get out of it. <laughs> there are too many things to snoop into. And I'm an incurable snooper. <laughs> That's a likely looking pair of glasses. Yes, I bought those for the convention. They're pretty powerful. Here. Take a look through these. Where'd you get them? I had them made in Germany. They're the most powerful glasses I've ever seen. Yeah, they're pretty potent, aren't they? I always carry them. I use them in my business. How? Oh, ways. You told me over the telephone you had a surprise for me. What is it? Oh, that? That's something in your line. What do you make of that? Well, I should say that was a human ear bone. Exactly. Where'd you get it? I found it last night, in the fireplace over there. You mean to say... Rather unusual, isn't it? Finding the ear bone of a human being in the fireplace of a fashionable hotel. Ah. Oh. Why, well, what the... Steve. Steve. Hello. Send a doctor up here, quick. Mr. Walcott is ill. Right away, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Gordon. Someone just telephoned from apartment A. He wants a doctor. Something has happened to Dr. Walcott. Get me Dr. Bronson. No, oh, doctor. Something has happened to Dr. Walcott in apartment A. You'd better go right up. Uh, watch the desk, will you, Jim? What's the matter? Mr. Walcott. There he is over there on the divan. Nothing serious. A little rush of blood to the head. Probably vertigo. Is he subject to these attacks? I don't know. I haven't seen him in four years. What about that blood on his forehead? Oh, <laughs> oh well, that's nothing. Bumped his head as he fell, most likely. 
Most likely. He's coming around. How is it, old fellow? What? Oh. What happened? Why, you fainted. The heat or something. Well, you better be careful of your diet in this weather. Well, I'll be darned. Hey, what the... Oh, you bumped your head. That's nothing. A piece of court plaster will fix that. Ever suffered from vertigo? <laughs> no. Nothing's ever the matter with me. Well, you better stay quiet for the rest of the night. Play pinochle with Cornish here. Hold still a minute, will you? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Cornish and I were just going out to get a bite to eat. Well, suit yourself. I'd advise staying quiet myself. Your liver's a bit off, maybe, huh? Go on, I haven't any liver. <laughs> well, maybe that's what's the matter with you. <laughs> well, whatever it is, I'm quite ashamed of myself. Just put your charge on my bill, Doctor. Ah, oh, don't be absurd. Professional courtesy, my boy. All set? Well, thanks for coming up. I feel very important. You are important, Doctor. I don't have to tell you that. My advice is to take things easily for a while. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night gentlemen. Night. Yeah, take his advice and get shot at some more. Shot at? That's what I said. Well, what are you talking about? You were most certainly shot at right through that window. Well? There you are. Yes. The same old story. It ricocheted off that wall. They're not decorating rooms with bullet marks. What's more, the whole people know all about it. Are you crazy, Bill? Well, I've been accused of it. Well, if why in the world should anyone shoot at me? Well, for that matter, why should burnt ear bones be found in fireplaces of respectable hotels? Yeah, but... Yeah, how could they? The window's closed. Sure, the hotel clerk closed it. I saw him do it. That's what makes me think the management knows. Bronson and his upset liver. I wonder if they'd take another shot at you if they got a chance. Oh, don't worry. They can't see in here from the outside with the window closed. Who can? How should I know? What are you going to do? Do? What can we do? Any news from that assistant of Klein's? Nothing today. Mm, a great detective force, a hotel clerk and an undertaker's assistant. I told you you'd better call in a firm of regular detectives. Yes, that would be brilliant, under the circumstances. But, Bill, I tell you, I haven't an enemy in the world. The people don't go around just shooting other people through hotel windows. No, neither do doctors find burnt air bones in fireplaces. Remarkable likeness, I should say. Now, you stand over there, out of, out of the way. Better still, take those glasses of yours and watch the street. Take a good look at every parked car you see. I think you're out of your head. Possibly. Nevertheless, I think... Did you hear a shot when I fell? No. But there are such things as maxim silences. I doubt anyhow if the shot would be heard above the traffic noises. Ah, uh, it's absurd. No one would... No? Take a look at that. Well, I'll be... Come on downstairs. 
Have you got a gun? Well, yes, but we'll bring it. Do I have to have a gun to interview the hotel management? We're not going to interview the hotel management. Yes, we're going to interview the people in the fourth floor front, the third house from the corner on the opposite side of the street. That's where the shot came from. You saw it? As plain as I see you. But listen here, Bill. This is a matter for the police. I saw all the shooting I wanted to see during the war. Now, don't worry. There won't be anybody there when we arrive. Besides, I am the police. Come on. It'll be much more interesting than a midnight supper. Yeah, and much more dangerous. Just a minute, and I'll be right with you. Just as I thought. Empty. Do they open everything? Just about. Are you sure we're in the right place? You know powder marks when you see them? It looks like it, doesn't it? Well, now, don't touch anything. I'm going to come back here later for fingerprints. Fingerprints? Now, I want to see if there's anyone with a record mixed up in it. Hello. Hello, will you call me a taxi, please? Oh, there's one outside. I'll be right down, thank you. I certainly would like to know what was in that note. Suppose we follow her. Well, it isn't necessary. We'll see what she has to say to the taxi driver. She's going to 241 Wellington Place. Well, how do you know? I read her lips. I learned lip reading years ago. That's why I had these lenses made. I can make out what anyone is saying a block away. Well, I'll be... You'd be surprised how handy it comes into my business. Yes, but weren't you taking an awful chance? Suppose she'd gotten into the taxi before she gave the driver the address. Well, that wouldn't make any difference. I had the taxi number. I could have gotten the address later. Yeah, well, what are we going to do now? Go there? No, we'll go over to the hotel and have a talk with Gordon. There's something very funny in the air. And listen, don't you say anything about having been here. In fact, don't say anything about anything. In other words, keep my mouth shut. We'll go out the way we came in. Walcott and Cornish are outside. They say they want to see you. I wouldn't mind that fellow Walcott. But Cornish makes me nervous, sir. They say what they wanted? No, just said they wanted to talk to you. Well, I suppose I'd better see them, eh? 
Oh, you stick around. I may need you. All right, gentlemen. Go right in. Remember, let me do the talking. Well, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Any bad effects? No. I'm quite all right. I thought you would be. Just in touch with the heat. I should think you two would pass out in here without a window open. What's the matter? Are you afraid of a little fresh air? I haven't noticed that it was close. Sometimes it's cooler in here with the windows closed. Well, I like plenty of fresh air. You got any idea why we're here? Not the slightest. Well, it's to tell you that we think, or rather, I think, that Bronson's theory about what was wrong with Walcott is a lot of bunk. Really? Really? You know what happened to him? Why... He was shot. Shot? Just that. Or rather, shot at. Why, why should anyone shoot into a hotel room at midnight? That cut on his forehead is a bullet wound. Somebody took a pot shot at him through the window. Oh, no, absurd. Why should anyone want to shoot at Dr. Walcott? I don't know. That's what we're here to talk over with you. But uh, what makes you think all this? Walcott is a healthy man. He's not going around flopping on the floor just because there's a little heat. That's a bullet wound over his forehead, or I never saw one. Is that your uh, only reason for thinking he was shot at? That's enough. What do you think, Dr. Walcott? I? I don't know what to think. Have you any enemies? Anyone who would shoot at you? Why, no. Did you hear a shot, Mr. Cornish? No, but the traffic well, noise... Now, look here, this thing is getting serious. Oh, I can't help but think you're mistaken, Mr. Cornish. Why, it's a, it's a terrible thing to contemplate. We'll have the matter looked into, of course. I'll have the house detective write up. As I said before, gentlemen, I think you're mistaken. And, uh... Would it be too much to ask you to say nothing about your fears outside for the time being? Of course, we'll attend to the matter right away, but if this thing ever got into the newspapers, why, you can imagine what it would do to the hotel. The business is just coming back, but... If my guests ever suspected that they were being shot at through the hotel window, you... Well, of course. I think uh, Mr. Walcott understands. How about it, Steve? Uh, why, yes, of course. In the meantime, he'd like to change his room. Yes, I'd like that. Oh, most certainly, but I still think you're mistaken. It's quiet. It's too monstrous. Of course, the least we can do is to change your room for you. Uh, is there any special location you'd like? An inside room. Something looking out on the court. Something on the first floor. I'm staying with him. He's not taking any chances from now on. First floor on the court. <laughs> well, uh, they're not very comfortable on a hot night, but uh, I think uh, Sweet G over there across the court is available. Uh, would you like that? That'll do very well. Uh, all right, I'll attend to it right away. Uh, get me Mr. Rankin, please. Oh, Mr. Rankin, uh, uh, Dr. Walcott is changing his rooms to Sweet G across the court. Uh, see that these things are moved at once, please. Yes. Here, boy. Thank you, Doctor. Atta boy. You caught on to the gag immediately. Uh, I don't know that I did. I know for some purpose or other you stepped on my foot. I almost yelped. I wanted you to take this room so we could find out what our good friends across the court talk about when we're not there.
Write down this number. Capital 6753. Things are bad, if you must know, Adolph. There's been another attempt. This time on a prominent New York doctor. Walcott, the nurse specialist. And that fellow, William Cornish, the investigator that you've been reading about so much in the newspapers, is mixed up in the case. Cornish? What's he got to do with it? And nothing yet. Uh, but he's a friend of Walcott's, and he has me worried. Any clues? No, not yet. When the Countess Dorbear was driven out at midnight last week. And Rankin was sure that they were shooting from a car that was parked across the street. But he's changed his mind now and uh, has nothing more to suggest. Rankin's a fool. He's doing his best. You can't expect a hotel clerk to be much of a detective. Go to a regular firm of detectives. <laughs> that would be a bright idea, wouldn't it? They'd find out about the other. You better do something quick. It'll get into the newspapers. And where will the Clarendon Arms be then? It will be as bad as if the other were found out. Now, uh, win it, Adolph. Your assistant Welsh is here. Welsh here has something. I saw her about 15 minutes ago. Her? She came out of an apartment house across the street, about three doors from the corner, and got in a taxi. I tried to follow her, but I lost her. Three doors from the corner, eh? And that's from... Adolf, we've got a hot clue. Welsh has located the building. I'll call you back in a little while. Sh shut that window, Rankin. Well, let's have it, Welsh. Now we're getting somewhere. They know just as much about the shooting as we do. You stay here. I'll be back in half an hour. Yeah, but where are you going? I'm going outside to another telephone. The lines here are too easily tapped. I want to call police headquarters and find out where Capital 6753 is. And one or two other things. Get your hat and coat. We're going calling. Where? 241 Wellington Place. We're going to see if we can locate that good-looking young woman. That's not Capital 6753. No, that's Klein's Mortuary. That's who Gordon was talking to. He's a heavy stockholder in the hotel here. Who? Gordon or Klein? Both. I had them all looked up. And your friend Doc Bronson owns a big slice himself. Well, how about Rankin, the hotel clerk? No, he's not in on it. He's just an employee. Hmm. Well, now I don't know any more about the affair than I did at first. But it's evident that for some reason, someone who has a grudge against the hotel is shooting at the guests through the windows. Yeah, and also for some reason, the hotel people don't dare go to the police about it. But do you think the underworld has anything to do with it? No, they're dealing with amateurs, and they know it. That's why they're fighting with the only means at hand. Come on, we'll look up the young woman. She's the keynote to the whole situation. What are you going to do? Well, just look around. It's dark, nobody will see us. Perhaps we'll go in. I don't mind telling you, it makes me nervous. 
And you, New York's greatest nerve specialist. <laughs> well, hereafter, when my patients need a tonic, I'll prescribe acquaintanceship with you. <laughs> Company's arriving. Maybe it's her husband. Maybe. Let's look around and see if there are any servants. It looks very much as if they were there alone. We'll call. Or you'll call. I'll call? Why not? You're the one they shot at. Go in and ask them why. Not only get shot at, but shot through. No, the only way I'd go in there is with a dozen policemen. <laughs> Don't worry, nobody's gonna shoot at you. I'll be close by. Go on, see how good a detective you are. Yeah, but... Just go up, push the doorbell, tell them you're from the hotel. Ask them why they shot at you from across the street. I never heard of anything quite so absurd. Perfectly simple to me. Go on. Yeah, but where will you be? Oh, around. Good evening. I'm from the Clarendon Arms, and I'd like a word with you. May I come in? When I say I'm with the hotel, I don't mean that I'm connected with it. I'm a guest there. And tonight you shot at me, and I came to ask you why. I don't know what you're talking about. Take your foot out of the door. Not until you agree to let me come in and have a talk with you. I don't want to bring this matter to the attention of the police. Oh, this is very strange. Come in. Thank you. Now, what is it? Tell me again. Well, I'm a doctor from New York. My name is Walker. I'm stopping at the Clarendon Arms. And tonight I was shot at. I was wounded by a bullet that came in through the window. And subsequent events lead me to believe that you know all about it. Come into the living room. Thank you. Now, what all these subsequent events you speak of? Well, the shot came from the window of your studio apartment opposite the hotel. A friend of mine saw it. But uh, I have no studio apartment opposite the Clarendon Arms. Well then, the apartment that you visited tonight. I saw you come out of it. How do you know where to find me? What brought you here? I traced you through the taxi you took. And it's all very exciting, I'm sure, but I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Do you mean to say you don't know anything about the studio that's opposite the hotel and that you were not there tonight? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, I know about the studio apartment. You see, it belongs to a friend of mine. But as for anyone shooting at you, I'm... Oh, Eric. Eric, have you been doing any shooting from your studio window? Shooting? Have you any guns there? No. None that I know of. Well, that gentleman... Yes, I heard from the hallway. Oh, look, dear, if you're going to catch your train, you'd better hurry. My car's outside. Oh, yes, I'd better be going, hadn't yes. I? Now, wait a minute. Oh, it's quite all right. I'll go into the matter with you. She doesn't know anything about it, and she's in a hurry. Go ahead, dear. You mustn't miss that train. Dolly, I'm sorry. I can't let her go. You can't, eh? Well, you have nothing to do with it. I don't know you from Adam, and from what I've overheard you telling her, I think you're a little crazy. Now, you and I'll sit here and talk a while. Well, I see I'll have to bring the police into this. If there are any police brought in, I'll attend to them. I advise you to do just as I say. 
What right have you forcing your way into people's houses and saying what you'll do and what you won't do? Go ahead, dear, please. I can attend to this. Uh, stop in at the studio if you need anything. Have you plenty of money? Yes, yes, I have money. Well, then hurry, please. Get on what is all this folder all about your being shot? It's just as Mr. Walcott says. He was shot by you. And incidentally, you've done all the shooting you're going to do today. You're under arrest, young man. Who are you? Cornish is my name. William Cornish. Well, you're not... Yes, the detective. Sit down. The young woman got away. Well, I know. That's all right. I didn't want her. I don't really want this young man, except to try and help him. Help me? That's it. <laughs> Not to terrorize the guests of the Clarendon Hotel, but in the other matter. What other matter? I don't know. But there is another matter, isn't there? Well, yes, there is. You're not working for the hotel, are you? No, I'm not. I'm a friend of Mr. Walcott's here. And matters are just as he said. I'm only interested in the case because I happened to be in the room when he was shot. What's it all about? You might be the one person who could help us. Try it and see. Oh, what's the use? You wouldn't believe me any more than the others believed her. You'd say we were mad, both of us. Try to lock us up. All I can say is try it. I'm warning you. You're going to say we are both out of our heads. Go ahead. Well, here it is. Miss Van Buren, my fiance, comes from Sumatra. She's American born, but she spent most of her life there. She arrived on the Maru Prince two months ago with her brother. They went directly to the Clarendon Arms and engaged room, apartment A. Apartment A, Miss Van Buren. Oh, thank you. And my brother isn't very well. Would you please send the house physician immediately? Why, certainly. Will you uh, phone Dr. Bronson and have him go up to apartment A? Thank you. Dr. Bronson is one in apartment A. The house physician will be right up, Ralph. Bronson uh, didn't seem to think it was anything to worry about, and in a few hours, Ralph did seem to be better. The next morning, Enid left for Salt Lake City. She didn't want to go. It worried her to leave him there at the hotel, ill and alone. It was very necessary, however. You see, the reason they came to America was to settle an the state they had inherited, and there were certain papers to be signed that only one or the other of them could attend to. Also, these papers had to be signed by a certain date. So. Enid just had to go. Now, on the train, she wired him, and again from Salt Lake City. She received no reply. You can imagine her state of mind when she returned and made her way to the hotel. Oh, Mr. Van Buren, is he better? I beg your pardon? I said, how is my brother, Mr. Van Buren? Van Buren? Uh, what room, please? Sweet A. What's the matter with you? Don't you remember me? Why, no, I'm afraid I don't. I'm Miss Van Buren. My brother and I arrived here five days ago and, and engaged Sweet A. My brother was ill, don't you remember? We had the house physician attend him. <laughs> there must be some mistake. Sweet A hasn't been occupied for two weeks. But what are you talking about? We most certainly did engage the suite and stayed there overnight. That is, I did. I left for Salt Lake City the next morning. Look in your register. My brother was ill and I signed it myself. Why, certainly. Oh, Mr. Harrison, 
Will you look up the registration cards, please? Uh, what was the date? It was last Friday. Friday. Uh, the name is... Uh, Van Buren. What was the first name? Enid. Oh, will you look up a card on Miss Enid Van Buren last Friday? Are you sure, Miss Van Buren, that uh, you have the right hotel? The right hotel? Good heavens, don't you suppose I know what hotel I stopped at? I told you my brother was ill and we had the house physician in, Dr. Brunson. Well, that's the name of our house physician, all right. Do you mean to say you don't remember the incident? Or me? I'm sorry. But I don't recall ever having seen you before in my life. We have no record of any such party. Thank you. There was no sign of Ina's registration. She was frantic. Why were they treating her so strangely? Where was Ralph? She insisted upon having Dr. Brunson call. He came to the manager's private office. And Enid recognized him immediately. But he didn't seem to know her. When she spoke of having called him that night to attend Ralph, he shook his head. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Miss Van Buren. I did not attend your brother. I was not at the hotel on the night you mentioned. Uh, I was at the theater with Mr. Gordon. Yes, we went to see Al Jolson. My brother, what have you done with him? I'll go to the police. Yes, perhaps it might be better to have the police in. Dr. Bronson, you call police headquarters and have Captain Wellesley come here and ask him to bring Dr. Barris with him. Barris, we learned later, was a city alienist. The hotel people considered Edith a subject of the psychopathic ward. When Wellesley and Barris arrived from police headquarters, she tried her best to substantiate her statement. She described minutely the fittings, color scheme, and arrangement of apartment A. They went up into the suite. the room. My dear young lady, this certainly is apartment A. But it's changed. It's not... I must confess that it doesn't tally very well with the description you gave us down in the office. My brother, where is he? What have you done with him? What sort of a trick is this? No, no, it's all right. Calm yourself, Miss Van Buren. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, but my brother, something's happened to him. They've done away with him. No, I hardly think so. But we'll look into the matter. Now, in the meantime, you come along with us. Oh, but where? What do you mean? Where are you going to take me? Now, don't worry. There's nothing to be afraid of. You just come along with Captain Wellesley and me. Oh, no. No, I can't. I must find Ralph. I tell you, something's happened to him. No. Now, you're perfectly safe. Everything's going to be perfectly all right. right. They took Enid into custody to the psychopathic ward in the city hospital for observation. They felt quite sure she was out of her head. She was alone and friendless. I was her only friend in America, and when she managed to get word to me, I came at once. Now, these events had brought on sort of a brain fever, and she was quite out of her head. It was a month before she recovered. Then they handed her over to me and told me to take her away somewhere to make her forget her hallucination. Did you? I took her away, but I couldn't make her forget what they called her hallucination. Now, what had happened to her brother? Where had they gone when they got off the ship? Oh, there you are. That's just it. Try as I would, I couldn't break Enid's story or oblique. Then I became convinced she was telling the truth. I went to see Gordon myself. When I told him I believed her story, he just eyed me. Then he asked where she was and invited me to bring her down for another conference. But I was on to that. He wanted to get his hands on her again and turn her over to the city authorities. He believed I was no fit person to have charge of it. You had quite a bit of influence, eh? Mm, he had the Clarendon Arms Corporation behind him. It's very influential. And there was mental taint in her family generations back. That doesn't mean anything. There is in most families. I know, but I was afraid of him. Afraid he might find it out. It was a desperate situation. There was something in the air. 
An intangible something, but it was there. I was determined to get to the bottom of it. I told Gordon that if he didn't tell me what had happened to Ralph, no one would ever live in apartment A in the Clarendon Arms again. Well, of all the fools... I told him that if he maintained we were mad, we would be mad. We'd fight him with his own weapons and force the truth from him. So you started taking pot shots at his guests from a window across the street? Only to frighten them. You see, I'm an expert marksman. If a bullet struck Dr. Walcott, it must have glanced off some object in the room. Yes, but the dummy, that was no glancing shot. Well, I too have powerful glasses. Your dummy never fooled me for an instant. You know, I sympathize with Gordon. I'm beginning to believe you're crazy, both of you. I knew you would. And yet I don't. Your story is so mad. Excuse me. Besides that, I know something. Well, what is it? Anything that'll help Enid? Well, never mind that. Where was your fiancé going on the train? Out of the city. We agreed that if we were found out, she would flee and not show up until it was safe. She's stopping at the studio to pick up the rifle, the, the evidence. We must find her at once. You see, Dr. Walcott and I are not the only ones who know where the shots came from. They know? They saw her leaving the apartment. Oh, if they ever get their hands on her again, it's... Well, the doctor has a card. Come on, let's go. Good evening, Miss Van Buren. Now, don't be alarmed. Everything's all right. It's unfortunate that you went to the lengths you did in our little misunderstanding, but you have won. We've come to take you to your brother. Where is he? Yeah, we'll show you. Now, everything's all right, uh, perfectly all right. But tell me where he is. It's much better that you come with us. Now, uh, there's nothing to worry about. Hurry, Walcott, hurry. He's doing 50 now. You don't want to ride that pieces, do you? <laughs> that up and we will arrive in pieces. She's been here and gone. Well, how do you know? The rifle is missing. Hey, come here. What do you make of that? C.A. What does that mean? It might stand for Clarendon Arms. Well, you think that? Well, it might be a message for you. They've got her. They'll take her back to the hospital. If that's all they do, there'll be very little to worry about. Well, where else would they take her? Steve, I think we'd better take another little trip. Over to Mortuary. Mortuary? Yes, Clarendon. He's a great friend of Gordon's. Come on. I'll tell you, Miss Van Buren. He's... he's dead. Just wait in here a moment. You will know everything.
Mr. Gordon! Mr. Gordon, open the door! Listen, Gordon, I can't go through with this. I'm not used to it. What are you going to do about it now? But the police? She put herself outside the law by the shots that were fired into Clarendon Arms. If she plays outside the law, we will. Now, we started this thing, and we've got to go through with it. It's too late to turn back now. Call Barris, the city alienist. Have him come up here. I want him around when it happens. But supposing it doesn't happen? It will. Barris is on his way. He lives near here and won't be long. Where are you? Gordon is there. That's his car outside. Good. And we're not on a wild goose chase. Well, what now? You two go inside. See what they've done with it. Yeah, but what are you going to do? I'll stay in the background. Don't bother about me. Let's have authority on our side. But Mr. Cornish, how oh, it's all right. If what I suspect is true, there'll be very little talk about the shots that were fired into the hotel. I'll send the sergeant with you. A sergeant. I don't mind telling you that I'm scared. You needn't tell us that, Adolf. I wish to blazes we'd never heard the name Van Buren. We all feel that way about it. Mm -hmm. 
All right, gentlemen, Mr. Cornish has explained. Let's go. That couldn't be Barris so soon. I don't think so. Though he doesn't live far. Uh, go and see Adolf. We're looking for Mr. Gordon. Why, I... Now, uh, don't tell me he's not here. That's his car there. Yeah, come on, let's I'm go. I'm sorry. Good evening, Mr. Gordon. How are you, Doctor? Where is Edith Van Buren? Why, how should I know? Well, gentlemen, I think that ought to explain it. Sergeant, we'll fix that. Listen now, come on, where is she? What's happening here? Where is she? Get down, I'll be down. Listen, listen. What's the matter, Bill? Is she? It's all right. Come ahead. I'm not water shouting there. Get him before he gets away. What has happened to her? She's all right. She's just fainted. Here's a job for you, Steve. Wait a minute. No one is to leave this room. See to that officer. Get some smelling salt. How is she, Steve? Oh, uh, she'll be all right. All right, Gordon. Come across. Tell us all about it. I have nothing to say. Where is Miss Van Buren's brother? Yes. Where is he, Bronson? Miss Van Buren's brother is dead. Ralph. Dead. Oh. Careful, Bronson. There's no use in our remaining quiet, for you've got nothing to be afraid of. Better tell them everything. Miss Van Buren's brother died of bubonic plague. Bubonic plague? Just that. I recognized it the moment she had left. There was nothing we could do. He died before we could get him out of the hotel. Well, that accounts for everything. You want the truth, facts. Well, listen to this. The Clarendon Arms has suffered terribly, like all other hotels, due to the Depression. The upturn in business and the coming convention bid fair to put us on our feet again. But 
Let the word bubonic plague be even whispered within our walls, and our guests would desert us like rats leaving a sinking ship. They would not only leave the hotel, people would leave the city. And so you did what we thought was necessary. We determined, no matter what the cost, this news must be kept a secret. And it was. We couldn't trust Miss Van Buren's discretion. Returning, she would demand to know the cause of her brother's death. She would demand to see the death certificate and be in such a state over the fact that it had been not informed her at once as to the real cause would broadcast the news to the four corners of the earth. So we conceived the plan and carried it out. Apartment A was hastily fumigated and redecorated. All traces of Van Buren's registration were destroyed. We made believe we'd never seen her before. It was a pretty hard on her, but it was the only thing that could be done. What about the body? Mr. Klein here attended to that. That's his business. He destroyed it, burnt it, in the fireplace in the living room of apartment A. That's where you slipped up, Mr. Gordon. The hardest part of the human anatomy to destroy by fire or any other means is the ear bone. Klein was careless. We found one of them in that fireplace. That's what brought Walcott and myself into the case. Remember that next time, Klein. We did nothing outside the law. No. How about the death certificate, Bronson? It was filed with the proper authorities at the time. For bubonic plague? Just that. The health department was as worried as we were. But they kept quiet. They were afraid it would be fatal to the city if the news leaked out. And it was for the same reason that they locked Miss Van Buren in the psychopathic ward. No. Barris here knew nothing of the plague business. Miss Van Buren became a fit subject for observation. Barris merely did his duty. And he came here tonight to do his duty again, to take her back to the psychopathic ward. If he thought it necessary, yes. Anyone who shoots through windows at unsuspecting hotel guests is a fit subject for the psychopathic ward. And if there were any doubt, in Barris's mind, as to the young woman's previous mental condition, you are going to make sure that she would be a fit subject for his decision tonight. That was the reason for all that hocus pocus in the basement. You knew the strain she was under, so you hoped to destroy her sanity altogether. You oh, wait a minute, Eric. Isn't that so? Well, what are you going to do about it? I haven't decided yet. You're going to forget it. That's what you're going to do. We may have stretched the law, but we did it for the good of a great institution and a community. Later, we were going to tell Miss Van Buren the truth and take our medicine. But they saved us the trouble. They could probably sue us for a great many things, but let them. And with our influence, we'll send them to prison for attempted murder. Oh, you will, eh? Quiet now, boy. That's your one mistake. Your desperate gunplay. You placed yourself right in their hands. Do you mean to tell me they're going to get away with this? We're all going to forget it. Forget it? Cornish, do you hear what he says? We're going to forget it. Yes, and I agree with him. You're going to forget it. Not for the sake of the Clarendon Arms, or any of its stockholders, but for the sake of the community. It must never be known. The bubonic plague endangered this city. I wonder if you can understand that. Yes. Yes, I think I do. Now, I've got an old farm upstate. You two must come up there with Walcott and myself. We'll make you forget. Oh, Eric. Eric, we must go and forget. Yes, dear. Yes. <laughs> 